Hey, we're, it's, it's doctor day today. We're going to improve your health. This is not the Dr. Oz, Dr. Oz show. This is Dr. Ed's show. <laughs> well, with me is uh, Dr. Harold Katz, and a little bit later on in the show, Dr. Sanjay Jain, who talks about, and this is something I'm sure that, that you're familiar with, this whole integration of everything, every part of your body kind of connects with everything right. else, right. whether it's your, your, your dental health that right. you're, you're an expert in or... Uh, or your diet, nutrition, whatever it is, right? It's all connected. It, everything is connected, right? Well, well I, I'm a dentist. I have a degree in bacteriology. Right. But what I've learned over being a dentist for many, many years, mm -hmm. about 40, is that your mouth is the doorway to the rest of your body. Right. And uh, I'm sure you've been to someone's house and the hallway is just a terrible mess. I can assure you the bedroom and bathroom <laughs> is a disaster. Yeah. Yeah. So you need to keep your mouth really clean. And many studies show that bacteria in your mouth uh, when you have an open wound site, which is bleeding gums. Uh, those bacteria travel through your body. They end up in the heart valves, uh, brain stem. Uh, even pregnant women who have bleeding gums are seven times more likely to give birth to premature low birth weight babies because those toxins from bacteria even cross the placenta. So there's a lot of things that happen starting in your mouth. It seems to me that the mouth gets no respect. Uh, you know, I, I, look, I'm, I'm, an attorney, I'm an attorney, and yes. I, had, I had a client one time that had an oral infection. You know, he went to the dentist, got some uh, root canal, or not root canal, I think it was crowns at the time, yeah. done, got an infection. Two weeks later, he was dead. It happens a lot. It happens a lot. People don't hear about it. Endocarditis? Is that what it's yes, called? endocarditis. Yeah. 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 If you have a history of a rheumatic fever, as an example, you must tell the dentist before even you get your teeth cleaned, even the hygienist, let them know because you need to be premedicated with antibiotics to prevent those bacteria. Because when you have a cleaning, something as simple as a cleaning, there is bleeding going on. Right. And again, any type of bleeding in the mouth is literally an open wound site. And what happens is if you have a history of rheumatic fever, uh, your valves are weak to begin with. Those bacteria lend, end up on those valves and will cause endocarditis and, and death. Uh, and the same thing happens with the, uh, you, know, so you see you know, in the cartoons with someone with a swollen face. Right. If your face is that swollen, by the way, you're probably almost pretty dead uh, <laughs> yeah. because those bacteria, again, will travel into the brain they, they, stem. They move and from it. the area, right? They do. Hey, you, I, you, get, you get a sepsis and you get other major problems. Yeah, I, mean, I, I have a uh, born with a mitral valve oh, problem okay. in my heart. Yeah. So my dentist always recommends, hey, take some amoxicillin before exactly. you go to the dentist. Exactly. Now, why is that important? Uh, because, again, you want to protect against those potential, a potential infection getting into the heart valves. Uh, MVP, my, micro valve prolapse, is, again, the condition where uh, the heart is in a weakened condition. You don't want uh, the bacteria to overtake that environment as well. So by using a, a pro, uh, a, an antibiotic, right. preventively, you can prevent those infections from happening. You know, we were talking before we went on the air. I was, yeah. You told me you just returned from London. I was yes. kidding you. So what's with uh, European teeth? I mean, <laughs> they, they take care of their... What is the difference between, as you travel around the world, what is mm -hmm. the difference in the, some of the, the dental, the oral hygiene habits of, of cultures? Well, generally speaking, uh, dentistry has advanced quite a bit. There's a lot of preventive work going on. Implants, it's tremendous advancement. Uh, I go to Asia frequently, been to China and Singapore and Cambodia even, and they're very advanced in, in doing implants. Uh, uh, the rich oil sheiks from the Middle East go to Thailand to dental hospitals because they're so advanced there. When it comes to England, not, not the rest of Europe, but England mm -hmm. in particular, you know, it's always a joke, you know, the Austin Powers movies with the dirty mm -hmm. teeth. Right. Uh, it's really not an exaggeration. There's, uh, you know, socialized dentistry has been there for a number of years. And what basically happens, the government is running out of money, so they'll only fund a tooth extraction. So you see beautiful 22-year-old women walking around with four or five teeth missing. You wonder what's going on. That's sort of the system. They're sort of uh, used to that. Uh, they're trying very hard to educate them with preventive, uh, using oral products that actually work instead of uh, what they've used in the past, you know, the high alcohol. Uh, they drink a lot, they smoke a lot, and that's not good for your not teeth or breath. And I notice you have a lot of products yeah. here. You want to go through some of them? Yeah, yeah. Sure? so yeah. generally speaking, we're talking about how to prevent uh, oral problems. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so let me just sort of jump to something that's very advanced. You hear a lot of talk about probiotics. Right. Uh, you know, Jamie Lee Curtis talks about probiotics, you know, for the stomach and flatulence. I can say flatulence on yeah, TV? Sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, well, uh, in New Zealand, a uh, university there actually developed a probiotic that works on oral problems. Um, the 2% uh, of the population never has bad breath, gum disease, sore throats, earaches. All that happens in the back of the tongue and throat. Those bacteria start there and then go to other parts of the body. Uh, they, cl they 
I guess, cloned those bacteria, freeze-dried them, and we have a product now. It's available at therabreath.com. It's a probiotic specifically for oral health. It comes in a little um, freeze-dried uh, container. You put it in water, and you make a mouthwash out of it. And it smells awesome. really good. Terrific. Too. And, it, okay. and, and you mentioned bad breath. Yes. Okay. I mean, the hardest thing to do is to tell somebody they have bad breath. Yes. But you're really being doing them a favor, I think. You right? are because people don't. You cannot smell your own breath. Uh, sure, you see in TV and TV and movies where that nerdy fellow before a date does. <sighs> right. Great way to smell your hand, but no <laughs> indication about your breath. Yeah. So the way you do it at home, you lick the back of your hand. Right. Make sure you lick your own hand. <laughs> okay. Let that dry. <laughs> and then smell that. And the reason that works, it's because of what really causes a bad breath. It's caused by anaerobic sulfur-producing bacteria. They live in the back of the tongue, throat, and tonsils, and they produce chemicals called volatile sulfur compounds. Uh, one, is, one, one is called uh, hydrogen sulfide, that's the rotten egg smell. Another is called cadaverine, another is called putrescine. That's the smell of rotting flesh. So those chemicals, Great names, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. those chemicals will stick to your hand after the liquid evaporates. Mm -hmm. So that, that's a good way to test. What we've done, we have a clinic in Los Angeles called the California Breath Clinics, and mm -hmm. we have formulas called Therabreath. And these are products that you sell at your clinic? Yeah, we, we actually yeah. sell them in stores now, oh, Walmart okay. and Target. And uh, what I'd like to do, if I may, if yeah. people want some free samples, we have them available as well. They can you know, call my office. It's 800-557-6960. Uh, and they can get some free samples of yeah, this. Yeah, and we have your website up, and they can. Oh, great! Right. They can go to the website yeah. as well. Yeah, we even have a book they can download called the Bad Breath Bible. And you were and, and you were telling me that if somebody has um, bad oh. breath, you know somebody that has bad breath, yes. they can, you can. Well, you, yeah, you well, through the about. website, yes. through therabreath.com. Right. Uh, go to the website. There's a link on the top of the page, and ask, know someone with bad breath? Question mark. Right. Click on that. A form pops up. You give me the offender's email address. It's all anonymous. <laughs> we won't say that Ed said your breath sucks. Okay. I send them a very nicely worded email that it could be medication, such as you know, too many antihistamines. Well, what are you telling? You got an anonymous uh, uh, statement from somebody? I mean, or is well, it, it says it from Dr. Katz, like a sales pitch. from Dr. Katz, yeah. uh, America's bad breath expert, right. and we send about 100, 120 a week right. all over the world. Whether you're in Sri Lanka or Schenectady, uh -huh. people have bad breath, and we inform people, and people appreciate it because you don't want to go around all day with bad breath. You don't know you have bad breath; you can't smell it. Well. What about uh, uh, um, pregnancy? You, you, yes. I know you, you're very big on you know, dental care during pregnancy. Exactly. When women are pregnant, the uh, hormonal effects, mm -hmm. uh, the, the gum tissue, and gums start to bleed. And again, you want to make sure that your gums are pristine during pregnancy because you don't want any negative effects on the fetus. Again, the study at University of North Carolina showed bleeding gums and low birth weight babies go hand in hand. You want to keep your gums very, very clean. Uh, we have a formula called periotherapy, which has CoQ10 in it, uh, aloe vera. It's very soothing to the gums. You need to brush your teeth frequently. Uh, you need to brush for two minutes. Many of the common toothpaste out there have a detergent in it called sodium lauryl sulfate. That makes the mouth dry, which can make the gums bleed. So look for toothpaste which don't have sodium lauryl sulfate. I, I, I know you have some toothbrushes here too. Yes. So, yeah. People it, make. Yeah. yeah. I was going to ask you about the electric ones, the Sonics. They're and fine things. as long yeah. as it's the bristles that that are important. The bristles right. need to be soft. Soft bristles, you can use whatever you want. Okay. Nuclear powered is fine too, as long as the bristles are soft. People make a mistake and use hard or medium bristle brushes. Big mistake. It will cause your gums to bleed and you wear away tooth enamel. Right. And you need to floss. You can pick up these flossers or any sort of dental floss. Flossing, a study in Germany showed you add five years to your life by flossing because those food particles sit there, the bacteria break them down, uh, create sulfur compounds. The sulfur makes your gums very uh, squishy and more bleeding, so you got to floss. What's the worst thing you can eat for your breath? Garlic. Gar really? Because Garlic uh, I, is yeah. by far the worst. Uh -huh. And the uh, onion's bad too, but garlic, the molecule is so tiny, you can eat garlic and you can ha have, your feet would smell. That's well, how bad it is. And somebody that does have bad breath, oftentimes you'll see them you know, have a stick of gum or, or a lifesaver. I mean, does that help? Yeah. You, ha you have to avoid sugar. Sugar feeds all types of bacteria. Uh, so mints and those ones that come in the little tins, they have two types of sugar in them. They taste really good. They're pepperminty mm -hmm. and whatever. You, you have these uh, altruists. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. The two types of sugar. So read the ingredients. I always tell people, if you're my age, put on your reading glasses, read the ingredients of what you're sticking inside your mouth. Is Altoids positive or negative? You shouldn't use it. Shouldn't use it. Shouldn't use That's it. That's why yeah. we have them hidden back here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, look for xylitol. Xylitol is a much better sweetener, and it has anti-decay properties. Uh -huh. What about dental implants? I mean, it's a very oh. big uh, business now. That all the dentists are advertising for either cosmetic surgery yeah. or oh, dental right. implants. Okay. Right. Implants are, safe? 
Yes, they are. Uh, you should go to someone who's very experienced, though, because it does involve a, sur there's a surgery uh, procedure. You have to actually drill a hole inside the jawbone. Right. Now, it sounds like, oh, my God, but you're under anesthesia. Uh, once you get into the bone, there's no pain actually involved. But you always check out who's doing the work in your mouth. Uh, someone who's, if you're the first patient he's ever done it on, I would leave the chair and go someplace right. else. But is, is, is it have um, you know a significant lifespan? Are you get implants in your 40s and I mean, it last you the rest of your life? Or you uh, the, uh, well, the, uh, as far as I know, yeah. and I've spoken to some specialists in the field, that you get at least 20 years out of it, probably longer than you can from a traditional bridge where uh, you have to, you know, drill down the, uh, the abutting teeth to the space. Right. So uh, you actually save tooth structure by doing an implant. And if you don't have any teeth at all, there's something called a four on four where you put two uh, posts on uh, upper and lower, and then the denture fits right on top, and basically you don't have to remove your denture. So that's a big advancement for people that have mm -hmm. false teeth. It seems to me it would be better than a bridge, because a bridge, you're unable to, to floss and get underneath the it's bridge, It's very correct? hard to clean under it. Now, if you do have an implant, you have to make sure that you floss and keep those, that gum tissue very clean, mm -hmm. because they are susceptible in, to infection at the early stages after the implant. And talking of infection, people with diabetes really have to be on, on a guard, right? They're the most susceptible to many, many things. Besides bad breath, gum disease, tooth loss, uh, it's an unfortunate problem because people don't recognize it right away. Uh, for your viewers, if they have a, a, a chronic dry mouth situation, that's one of the key signs of being diabetic. I have a lot of patients who come in who tell me they have a dry mouth, and we give them things like these lozenges to help. But if it's a chronic situation where nothing seems to help, go get checked. Check with your physician if you are diabetic. That's very important because once you're diabetic, your tissue doesn't heal properly and your health basically goes down the drain very quickly. All the old uh, dental rules that uh, I learned when I was growing up, they're still um, relevant today, you know, rushing after every meal, flossing twice a day, that type of thing. Uh, they, they all yeah. work and you, got, you have to floss. Flossing is very important. And one thing, morning breath. People always ask me about morning breath because right. everyone knows what morning breath is about. <laughs> we actually did a study. We had 100 right. people come to my office and we had them use these TheraBreath formulas right before bedtime. And uh, 12 hours later, we measured them again. Uh, everyone had fresh breath. They were kissable and whateverable. Uh, the reason these work, these have oxygen compounds in them. Oxygen is the natural enemy of the anaerobic bacteria. Uh, it's a much better way to get rid of bad breath and make the mouth healthy than alcohol um, and traditional, the old fashioned. And, and the morning bad breath is caused people basically sleeping with their mouth open and that's, get, gets their mouth dry. And that's, yeah, when we, yeah, yeah. People who snore, the air goes over right. the back of the tongue and dries it out. And you don't produce saliva when you sleep. Your brain knows you're not eating, there's no saliva production. Well, amazing. So, yeah. and look, I mean, this, all this is great stuff, and if mm -hmm. your teeth are great, it's going to make you, make you a happier person, right? You certainly will. Yeah, you... and, and my next guest, Dr. Uh, Dr. Jane, is also going to talk about how the diet can make you healthy. That's very happy important as well. And healthy. Okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Well, thanks Katz. for having so me. Your Thank website you. is up there. People have any, any questions or informa information about dentistry or uh, dental hygiene? Yeah, go to therabeth.com, um, sure. And it's hey, all there. And if you have a friend with bad breath, uh, <laughs> yeah, check let out me this know. website. Yes. Let me yeah. know. <laughs> I'll track them down. We'll be right back with Dr. Jane. <laughs>